One of the easiest things to visualize is a sine wave that oscillates at 20 hertz, 20 cycles per second. So here we can see a speaker oscillating 20 cycles per second. If I change the frequency, we can no longer see it, but we can definitely hear it. So here's what a sine wave looks like, and here's how a speaker is affected when a sine wave is played through it. So there's a push and a pull that happens when it's at the zero point, this like line in the middle here, it's at rest. So it pushes and then pulls. So here's a beat up speaker and this is how it's working. The pushing is, and pulling is moving this paper diaphragm and it's got some foam around the edges that allows it to move. It's held in this metal basket. This is the voice coil that's been torn out of it. And then here's the coil that, of wire that's moving. And it's moving because it's in a magnetic field. So this is a magnet. You can see that's sticking. Um, and then this magnet here has a coil of metal. So it's kind of like spooled around uh, this copper wire and it sits inside of this magnetic field. And when the amplifier pushes the signal down the cable in one direction or the other direction, it makes it move in one direction or the other. And this has to do with the right hand rule. The way that it's being pushed down the wire will move, make it move in one direction. If it's pushed in the other direction, it will move in the other direction. So that's how a speaker works. Now the opposite, or backwards from that, is how a microphone works. So this is an old microphone. And if you look, here's that same kind of diaphragm situation and coil of wire sitting in a magnet. So that silver area is a magnet. And when this coil moves back and forth in the magnetic field, it generates a flow of electrons down. And it's going to be traveling through these two uh, connection points, which eventually connect at the back. And this is uh, an unbalanced microphone where, where it doesn't have a ground. Uh, we would not really want to use this microphone in long cabling situations. So an XLR microphone will plug in and, and include the ground. And an XLR microphone, or I'm sorry, an XLR connection looks like this. And I've removed the this unscrews so that you can get at the connection points here and one side is female, the other side is male. The male side, you can peel back some of this and see that they have been soldered where you melt metal from the cable to these pins. Uh, here we see our push and pull wires are um, left and right, so XLR stands for ground and then left and right, or a positive and negative, or a push and a pull. And uh, the ground solders to the shield which wraps around the cable. And this is a braided copper that goes all the way around this cable and it picks up all the radio frequencies or invisible radi electromagnetic radiation that might be in the air, um, radio, radio signals, things like that, and uh, dumps them to the ground which dumps to the ground in the mixer or device that you have this plugged to and that dumps to the earth ground so that none of the interference comes into the push-pull signal, all, it, that all gets kind of dumped into the ground. It uh, makes for a cleaner signal. And this, this type of cable you can run much longer. So an XLR you can run uh, long distances without interference because of the grounding. We can record pressure variations in sound waves with this kind of instrument, an oscillograph. Sound waves are striking the diaphragm at the left. The stylus records the sound waves as a graph. Later, we shall use such graphs to represent sound waves. Condensations cause the stylus to move upward. Rarefactions cause it to move downward. So far, we've seen how sound waves are produced. This is similar to what you do when you use a microphone. The compression and rarefaction moves electrons, which get sent down line, and that is recorded into the computer system. We say recording, but it's actually sampled into the computer system. 
and it samples the frequency and amplitude at 44,100 times per second. And here you see this digitally sampled audio on the timeline in Soundtrack Pro. In order to get it there, you have to do three steps for file management. And we're going to have to go over setting your input and output correctly because what we just heard was a feedback loop audio playing out of the speaker into the microphone and it's a fast loop of sound that gives you a high frequency pitch. Uh, we'll go over input and the different types of interfaces we use in class together. Testing 1-2.